Welcome everybody to the video. This is a video I've been thinking about for a little bit now after getting a lot of comments on some of my previous ones. And this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go over the top five tips, strategies you should be doing now if you're a new player or you're free to play. I'll caution that is if you're a seasoned veteran at this game, you may wanna skip this video, but by all means stick around. Maybe there's something here that maybe you're not doing and I'd love your feedback in the comments to give some support to other new players on how they can get ahead of this grind. And now speaking of grind, this game is a grind. The grind will never end. And if you're free to play and somewhat new, don't be going into this expecting you're gonna be getting a Galactic Legend. Um, anytime soon. I'm two and a half years into the game and I am nowhere nearly close. Once you come to that fact, you're gonna enjoy yourself a lot more and you're gonna be able to do the things you wanna do in the game. And if you're coming into the game now with the double shard drops and all of that, it's gonna be a lot easier time picking it up and trying to get ahead. So without further ado, let's get into my top five things every player should be doing if you're free to play. Coming in at number five, your guild. I made the mistake of when I first joined the game, I joined a guild that my brother was in. It was a very low ranking guild. They struggled filling um, the max amount of players in it. Mind you, it was very easy going and relaxed. You weren't you know, pressured into joining Discord. You weren't supposed to, co you didn't really have to coordinate stuff. And you know, that fit my lifestyle at the time. But once you start getting more competitive in the game, it starts to really stink that you're not getting, you know, you like my guild wasn't even doing the heroic Sith raid, so you're missing out on so many good rewards. And when you're doing the territory battles, that guild I was in couldn't even do the Geonosis territory battles. It was no point for them, so we were stuck on Hoth. I was getting so much less rewards compared to other peoples within my shard. So one day I finally, finally sucked it up and I ranked up my guild. And I'm still in a guild that's easy going. It's just there's a lot more people. They're a lot more competitive than my previous situation. And to be completely honest, I should probably look to doing it again. But I'm comfortable with where I'm at. We can sim all the raids, but now we can't do the new Rancor raids. So again, if you want to start getting those rewards, you got to level up. So what I would say to you is, is look for opportunities to go to that next guild level. Guilds are always have openings. They're always looking for players. You can always, always find a higher one. You know, even if it only means you're getting an extra couple stars in territory battles, it matters. That's more gear, more crystal, more tokens, everything you need to help your grind in this game. All right, coming in at number four, prioritizing your farm. Know exactly who you want to go for and don't waste your time on other characters. When in Grand Arena, I see it so many times when I'm researching the other player's roster, it'll be like, wow, their galactic power is like 500,000 more than me. I'm going to get smoked. But then as I start going through their roster and they literally have every tune between five to seven stars and they're all around gear seven, gear eight, gear nine. They've inflated their, you know, their GP. And on top of that, they're there's only so many stun guns and carbontes in this game like there is not enough for all your characters once you ever i think almost every character at that gear eight gear nine level there always needs at least a stun gun so you're literally wasting this precious precious gear on a character you may never take past gear nine or ten or ever have a value place on your roster so stop it only focus on the characters you're going to use and focus on those ones solely and finish the farm. Once you start farming one team, finish it to the end. You know, so many people get caught up with chasing the next new meta, the next this, the next this, and they're always scrambling. Just don't worry about it. Don't let that stress you out. Finish the team you were originally working on. As far as which team you should work on, find one that works for you. In the, you know, in the olden days, you used to prioritize Phoenix, so then you can go after Thrawn and Emperor Palp. Like, there is a way to knock off the Galactic Legends. If I was starting brand new today, 
I'd probably be going after Separatists as my first farm, whether it's Geos or General Grievous. The Geos, you know, you get a good fleet with it, but then, and you get a good Grand Arena team. You can even, I'm assuming if you're starting out, that'd be a great Squad Arena team too. And, or go General Grievous um, with the Droids, another great team. But what they do give you though is, you can then get Padme. And then once you have that Separatist Droids team, and you have the Padme team, then you can get gas. And then right off the bat, you know, you have a good Separatist team, you have a good Galactic Republic team with Padme, and then you have gas. That is three solid teams right there. And the Ga or the Padme team also gives you Galactic Republic ships. So if you were to focus on that area, you would come out with some very solid teams right off the bat to start this game. That's what I would do if I was starting new. Um, but like I said, focus on what's going to make you happy and how you're going to enjoy this game. Okay, coming in at number three is a very important one for the free to play player. And it's how to prioritize your resources in buying gear. Number one, always spend your ally points. I personally, I wait probably two days and then I go through them all, all to zero. You need to get those sh character shards in there so that you can bring them to the shard store. That is valuable currency for you. It blows my mind when I see the top tier players who obviously aren't as focused on this aspect of the game when they have hundreds of thousands um, of their, you know, of their ally points. It's, it's crazy that they're just sitting there not being used when that's like a vital currency for me progressing in this game. So that's number one, spend them, spend them, spend them, spend them. Now, when we go into shipments, you know, hopefully everyone's aware on the very first page of shipments here, these cash ones, buy them up, whether they're going to be used for salvage, for doing your relics, or sometimes you actually get worthwhile gear in here you need. So always buy those up. And I know these ones are obvious, but when I first started playing this game, these were at the bottom of the page. You used to have to scroll all the way down to the bottom to get the freebies. It was almost like they were hiding them on purpose. But anyways, buy these up. When you get here, if you don't have these tunes, buy them up. The other thing too is cash at the lower levels is always, you know, cash is all oh, you're always cash strapped even when i'm up in i'm at 23 million right now if i decide to start working on another team and i got level two players up to you know level 80 i'm done done that'll all my cash reserves will be gone and then i'll be cash poor for a week not being able to do something so for the interest of this video i'm gonna buy it i don't need to spend cash on anything right now so there's some more shards for me here we go cassian's ewing I don't know if you've noticed this, but ships give you like one or two extra shard store currency. So always buy the ships if you can before the actual tunes themselves. And I'll just buy chopper here. So here's the other thing. If you don't have all these characters maxed out, it's fine. See, I'm wasting my currency buying characters I already have for the shards. Am I ever gonna use mob enforcer? No, so why would I buy her shards for her? Is she ever going to be used for a galactic legend or, you know, a legendary event? I highly doubt it. And if it is, you know what? I'm not going to be able to get it first try anyways, no, most likely. So I'll work on my mob enforcer after the fact. You know, same with Jawas. I know Jawas, there is some use, but on a roster of my size right now, Jawas aren't a team I'm focusing on. So I'd rather much spend my currency on to get extra shards. So guild tokens, this should always use to buy gear always um well there are specific characters in here whether you're going for stark or dengar if your team needs this character then yes buy the tunes from here but if you don't same thing as the other store buy your precious gear stun guns or stun cuffs everyone needs them buy them up same same message with all these currency shops i have everything maxed out here except for jawas um, and Ugnaught, Eeth Koth, Cup. These are characters I'm never going to use. So I'm not going to waste my currency on them when I could simply just go, okay, here comes some more shards. You know, these two ones I just bought, that could be a stun gun. You know, that, this could be a golden eyeball. Do what's right for your team, but if you're focusing on a couple teams, gear is king. 
the higher geared your team is, the highly likelier you're going to be more successful against people you're playing against. Now, this is my favorite store for buying gear or for buying shards to buy gear because you have the three ships always standard here. Again, I have them all maxed out, but I, you know, well, Lumi, I could, uh, she's maxed out, but I don't use Night Sister Initiate. She's there. Same with Jawas, Tusken Raiders, Magma Trooper. I just don't have use for them on my team, so I'm in no rush to rush or to farm them. I'm going to go buy my shards. Now, the this store is interesting because like I guess alluded to earlier, if you're in the process of building a new team, you need cash. If you're building a fleet, building, you know, um, a new squad, you need cash. So I'd be hesitant to buy from here unless it's like a mod that's super critical. Um, obviously health mods are more common than other mods just because you get them a lot more frequently in events. So say you really need a speed mod um, and you really wanted potency and then they had speed here for a stat, then yes, okay, pull the trigger. But I wouldn't go bananas in the store unless it's a really, really good mod. Fleet store is the tricky one. So obviously I have a good fleet. I have everything maxed in the fleet store out. There's typically really good tunes in the fleet store. Um, this is also where you can get General Grievous. So I highly suggest actually farming the vehicles out of here. Um, so now I've gotten at the point where I could pretty much buy exclusively Zetas. But in the past, this was really this between this and the one fleet challenge was the only way to get Zetas. But now you get Zetas in Grand Arena. You get Zetas in the Assault Battles now, Challenge Tier 1. So the, you know, the, the tap on Zetas has been opened a little bit. So again, you should be farming Zetas primarily out of here. But you may be in a situation where you don't really need Zetas for that current team you're working on. You might even have two in storage. I've done this, you know, some people might say this is blasphemy, but I've gone in here and said, you know what, I got 23,000 token or points, tokens, whatever you want to call it right now. I'm going to buy a couple, uh, a couple repeats here to get some fleet shards, right? Guild event store. You, this is where you do not buy gear. I made the mistake of buying gear a lot in here. Yes, it helped get my characters up a lot faster, but now... I have been so slow in getting my negotiator to seven stars. Like there, there has been seven star negotiators in my shard for what seems like years now. And I'm still working my way here. Also, I alluded to I'm trying to work on Jedi Knight Luke. I have to buy Yoda with these tokens and it's taking forever. And then I'm going to have to get Wampa and I have to get Malak still. So do not spend this stuff on gear. This was the one mistake I did make spending it on gear. You should be saving both of these currencies exclusively for the characters or capital ships out of here. Champion store, use it on whatever you want, whatever's going to make your thing, whatever's going to make your team better. And now the shard store. This is where the best, this is where I do most of my building. See, stun guns in here. Bam, bye. And then if there's nothing else, just keep hoarding that currency because you, it's it just rotates every every refresh, and you're gonna get better stuff in there. Um, the one thing I'll say, I, these ones are these pieces, these gear, gear 12. Uh, they're the left side of the gear 12 um, bracket when you're going up to gear 13. These ones cost a lot cheaper. I buy these a lot. These ones are really expensive. The gear 12 pieces on the right side of the tick character. Um, I tend to stay away from them because they do zap my currency a lot unless I really, really need them. I'll farm these ones exclusively out in, uh, out on the nodes. So that's what you should be spending your currencies on. Now let's talk about how you spend your crystals. Crystals should, yes, they should be used for finishing off that piece of gear you need, whether you need a stun gun or something like that. But in case you weren't aware, the other thing, good thing crystals are for is if we could find an example in here is like pieces of gear, like golden eyeballs, which are obviously always in high demand. So for 50 golden eyeballs, it's going to cost you 750 crystals, whereas it's 1300 for a stun gun or a carbonti or something like that. So there's a couple pieces of gear, like the golden eyeballs that are actually a little bit cheaper. So it almost makes sense to buy these with your crystal because you're getting more bang for your buck 
and then you farm the more expensive gear. And like I said, I've been hoarding crystals for a little bit. If you've hoarded your crystals up, then you, and you really need that stun gun, just go buy it. All right. And then the other last place I buy crystals, I'm getting roughly about 500 crystals into my account per day from Fleet Arena and my Shard Arena and from other random daily activities. Um, currently, I will do battle refreshes somewhere wherever I'm focusing. Right now, I've been focusing on Cantina battles because of obviously the Queel and IG-11 bonuses right now. So what I'll do is I'll, you're, you can always do three refreshes on either of these nodes before the price increases. So everything was 100, now it's 200. So I'll do my three refreshes. I'll go into Cantina battles. I do not have the Eben, Eben Hawk, so I've been farming that. So I hit it up, do my attacks, there we go, done. And not only that is now I'm driving that much more currency here that I can then go back and feed into the charge shop. So what I guess my basic rule would be is spend as long as you're bringing in positive crystals for that day, you can spend up to that on refreshes or you know save more for a bulk gear purchase. Okay, number two, mods. Keep this one real quick. This isn't going to be tell you how to mod your character. I don't know many people who like doing mod inventory management and mods in general, but what I will say is if you have good mods, you're going to be punching up a few levels and, you know, winning a lot more battles. I can't tell how many times I've thought I was facing off against a crappy team in Grand Arena and I throw, you know, a team that was either equal gear level or slightly better at it to only then get smoked. And it's because I didn't go in and check the stats and I didn't realize that that other team, although was under geared, was extremely well modded. Say they have a significant speed advantage and I don't even get to take a turn before they've already wiped me off the, wiped me off the map. So mods are important, even though you don't want to do it. What I would say is, is if you're in the beginning, it could be obviously overwhelming. You do get a lot of mods from events and rewards, so you could focus on using those and also focus on your top arena team whatever that is so say mine right now is gas if i'm going to do new mod updates i'm going to go all through anakin's mods here that i have on them and i'm going to see if anything new i have that i can upgrade and actually replace one of these mods and if i could replace one then i'm going to cycle it down to someone else on the team and then if all if it's bet if 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 it's worse than everyone else on that team, then I'm gonna bring it down to my second team. So you're always starting, you're always putting your best mods, you're always cycling your best ones on your top squad arena team. And then as you're replacing mods, you're bringing those down to the next tier, the next tier, the next tier, and then start selling your garbage ones at the bottom. If your mods don't have speed, just get rid of them. And now the number one thing to work on as free to play or a new player is your fleet arena squad you need to have a top tier fleet team this is going to be your best chance to compete and level up faster in this game number one the prizes for finishing so just if i'll leave a link to the video if you haven't seen it i finish number one in my fleet arena every week with rebels and the prizes here are awesome. Not only are you getting 400 crystals, but this 1800 here in the currency, again, this is the store where you're getting Zetas. Um, if you don't have some of the pilots, again, they're great characters. You can get General Grievous here. This is the, this is the store you want the currency in. Um, so it's definitely great to be near the top of this one. And the best thing about Fleet Arena is because it's so not diverse, there's no Galactic Legends in Fleet Arena, you can use a good Rebel team and you can beat the malevolences and the negotiators of the world. So if you're in a guild like me in a similar situation, you don't got a seven star negotiator yet. You don't got a six or a five and everyone else at the top does. There's no reason why you can't build up a solid rebel squad and work your way right through them. So the higher you're able to compete and get in, the more crystals you're gonna get and that crystal inventory is gonna work wonders for you. It's gonna allow you to do the refreshes. It's gonna allow you to buy gear. It's gonna get you to level up that much faster. 
And if you get, once you start cracking that top 20, if it's anything like my shard, you're eventually going to get that invite to the discord server of the shard chat. And you're just going to be welcomed in. You're going to pick a payout. They're going to let you move up during your hour of payout and take first every time. It is easy peasy. You just got to get there. You got to knock on the door. You got to get to the top. You got to show them that you could climb through them. And once you do that, you're set for getting number ones consistently, you know, as long as you're active. So that's what I have for you. Those are my top five tips to do now in 2021 for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. If you're free to play, new to the game, you follow these tips and it will give you a leg up on the competition. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and I'll have some more content and chat with you in the future.